But tripping like this, back and forth, wonder who gon' hold you. Who's gon' hold you? Never could speak about you get mad i'm mad we sleep it out and then she had the man who used to so she's technology what does that mean for gameplay in nba 2k21 for the next generation yeah and that's you know whenever we have a new console year that's something that always excites us as developers because we're always able to look and, and kind of dream bigger and uh for us it just meant you know faster processing and meant more memory it, um just the, the ability to do things that we couldn't do in last generation and so um, for us, it's, I think the big next step you're going to see is just immediately when you play the game, it's going to feel completely different. From there, we're able to just add so much more on top of that to make it feel even better, so. All right, let's talk specific modes. Anything new that you can tell us about? Well, we didn't want to unveil too much new stuff today uh, with new modes. But one thing I will say is that fans of the WNBA are going to be very excited uh, for what we're bringing to the table with Next Gen. Obviously, the 2K... It's NBA basketball on 2K Sports. Glad you could join us on this exciting Friday night matchup. And on tap tonight, it's Utah going up against Phoenix. This is Kevin Harlan with Hall of Famer Doris Burke and Greg Anthony giving us the rundown from the sideline courtside, David Aldridge. Now we get a chance to check out the standings out west. Already we're in December. You look at Phoenix. They've had a very slow start to the season so far, down in the bottom half of the conference. And checking out Utah, a half game back. And, and seeing where Utah is, they've had such a disappointing season. Even when they've gotten a little bit of momentum, they haven't been able to keep it going. It just feels like they're sputtering right now. Every time you think they've turned the corner, they really haven't. And nothing tips off a broadcast like getting the lowdown from the sidelines. And we've got David Aldridge there for that. David, good evening. Well, guys, since Devin Booker's been in the pros, he's been able to show his ability to create. He said at Kentucky, all I shot was catch and shoot threes. I was fitting in with my team playing off of others. But my dad always taught me the fundamentals. I don't want to rely on one thing. Being good at everything is how you earn your spot on the floor. Kevin? He's doing it all, DA. Thanks. Well, around this time of year, lots of national broadcasted games, Doris. Does that impact the players, you think, in any way? I certainly think the guys are aware of the nights they're on national television. Some guys relish, Kev, as you know, the opportunity to play on the big stage. So for mm -hmm. the, the regular season, those nights where you know the entire country is watching, that's a big deal. And checking out Utah's opening lineup, Joe Ingles is out there with Bogdanovich. Then it's Conley, then it's Rudy Gobert, and it's Mitchell in at the two spot. And for Phoenix, here we go. They've got Ricky Rubio, Oubre out there with Dario Saric. Then there's Devin Booker, and it's Aiton in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. Now here's Rubio. Booker outside. Get the perimeter. Pass to Oubre. Six on the shot clock. Gobert with the block. Here's Hayton. That one off the back iron and out. Down low. And the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Engel. So it's Phoenix now. And this game, the first chance they've had to see Utah. Rubio against Conley. Gobert with the block. And now Utah, fast break. Conley's running. Mitchell wide open. And the shot is long. For Phoenix, they've gone 0 of 3 from the field to start the game. Sharch attacking. One up, one down. Two points with his first shot this game. 
Boy, what determination from Dario Saric. So good at being aggressive around the rim. Rubio against Conley. And they call the foul, so a chance at the line for one more coming up. And giving up some inches inside, but makes up for it with an aggressive style. Well, he's attacking, he's forcing the issue, and that's simply stated a terrific play. Utah shooting their first foul shot of the night. And over the course of his career, Mike Conley taking on more and more of the leadership man. He's embraced it, Kevin. And he said letting his hair down was a way of letting go and just being confident in himself. Now, here's Oubre. Not a good performance from him in that loss to Orlando. Aiton inside. Gobert on him. Gobert with the block. Now, this is the calling card of Rudy Gobert, a superb shot blocker. The wingspan is a thing of beauty. Conley's shot is off. For Phoenix, they've gone just one for five from the field to start the quarter. The offensive rebound. Booker the pass to Ayton. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. This guy has got a dominant physical frame, incredible athleticism. Nice job by DeAndre Ayton inside. And there's the call on Dario Saric. That's his first foul. That's his first personal foul. Now about two minutes gone here in the first quarter. Now Conley really had troubles in the loss to Portland. It's stolen by Sharks. Booker outside. Clark reset for Phoenix. Goes back up. Oubre against Ingles. Shot clock at five. Oubre kicks to Booker. The tray. Aiton inside. Defended by Gobert. Booker looking around. Over Mitchell. A nice shot by Booker. Well, you love the lethal scoring ability off the dribble. Booker putting extraordinary pressure on the defense. Conley against Rubio. It's blocked, but they recover it. Gobert finds Conley. They shoot again. Charge grabs the board. Boy, the wheels have definitely fallen off in this quarter. He cannot buy one. And so it's Conley bringing up the ball for Utah. Let's a floater go. Here's Gobert. First shot, first basket. He's out of the blocks fast. I'll tell you, you cannot give Rudy Gobert an inch of space when he's working the glass. This guy excels at using his reach. Now here's Booker. Last time out, he had 14 points. Looking for Aiton, he gets it in there. An emphatic LU jam. What a connection DeAndre Aiton has with his guys. Great timing on the alley -oop. And a first time out of the game called for Utah. Man, that game goes down to the wire. Both teams exhausted, but only one has something left for the encore. You know, that one's a tough one to take. You force the extra session, and then you have the heartbreak of not being able to get it done in the extra session. Brutal. Frank Kaminsky, he's checked in for Phoenix. Utah trails by three. Here's Moutier. 17 points for him last game against Portland. Who's watching him? Let's it go with a three. No good. Shot missing. And Phoenix the other way now. They just got overwhelmed. We knew that game was going to be a tough one for them, and we were right. Sometimes it's about the talent disparity, and it would have taken a massive effort for them to even be competitive, and it was nothing close to that. Bradley can't get it to go. Boy, this guy is a good finisher, so he misses a chippy. That's tough to take. And they've scored several times already here in the first quarter on the inside. Wow, able to survey over the top of defenses as well as squeeze into tight quarters. Rubio is the constant playmaker. 
Utah shooting a pretty distressing 27% here in the early minutes. Clarkson against Booker. The 15-footer. Nice touch on the bank shot. Hey, this guy reads situations so well, and he knows how to execute. And Rubio kicks to Booker. 56 seconds left in the first quarter of the game. Another one falls for Phoenix. Well, just such a crafty offensive talent. Devin Booker working the mid-range. What doesn't he do? Moutier dishes to Bradley. They get a hand on it. Rubio with it. Now defended by Moutier. Bradley against Rubio. On the wing, Booker. Passes it to Kaminsky. Back to Booker. Down to five on the shot clock. Over Davis. Again, Phoenix. Lightning quick release on that jumper. No one could get to Booker in time. Clarkson against Booker. Clarkson with the ball. To the wing on the left. Here's Moutier. Well, nice defense by Rubio, making an effort to frustrate his man. And we reach the end of the first quarter. Phoenix ahead, leading by five. And we'll get the second quarter underway on the other side of this break. One of the better two-way guards in the NBA, Mike Conley said his inspiration growing up was none other than Gary Payton. He's one of my favorite players growing up. Um, I had Gary Payton jersey, had the shoes, everything. So when I looked at a player, I was like, you know, he plays on both ends. I want to be able to do that too. And you know, Conley, maybe not the size of Payton, but Greg, he's always taken the challenge defensively. And you can see how much of an influence the glove had on Conley. He plays a lot like him on that end. And thanks again for tuning in. If you're just joining us, we've played through one quarter of action so far. And from what we've seen, guys, from Phoenix, what do you guys see? You, you got to credit their defense, communicating, rotating, making plays on the ball. Yeah, I think they wanted to come out of the gate strong, and they have. They've taken the early lead here. On the floor for Utah, getting going here in the second quarter. They've got Jordan Clarkson. Davis is out there with Brantley. Then there's Emmanuel Moutier. And it's Niang in at the three spot. Now, here's Clarkson. That's tipped. Boy, really tough to score on DeAndre Ayton. Such a patient shot blocker, guys. And the dunk by Booker. And, and creating a little separation here, gaining some confidence. Well, if you continue to execute at both ends, you can build on this lead. Here's Moutier. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. Softly drops in the floater. If you can't help but notice the teams are shooting earlier in the shot clock. One theory being the faster you shoot, the more possessions you get. Well, and the numbers would, would speak to that. No, no doubt, Kevin. And the reality is for, for announcers and for fans, that breakneck pace makes it more exciting for us. One NBA mm -hmm. coach told me this past year that your field goal percentage in the first 10 seconds of the shot clock gives you your best opportunity to make it. And the longer that shot clock goes on, the more your field goal percentage dips. So, hey, good for us, good for the fans, good for the teams. And that's because the defense timeout. has a chance to settle, correct? That's exactly right. Utah calls timeout, and the upside for Aiton was always present. But, Doris, were you surprised at how polished he was as a rookie? Not at all, because DeAndre Aiton has got a big-time offensive game. This guy can finish with the best in the league right at the cup. You know he's dynamic on the offensive end. And this guy's only going to add strength and get better on the defensive end. A big group substitution here for Phoenix. Aaron Baines, he's checked in for eight. Johnson comes in for Oubre. Mikael Bridges checked in for Devin Booker. And it's Carter in for Ricky Rubio. Now, here's Ingles. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. And with that, the Phoenix lead is cut to just seven on the basket from Mike Conley. 
I tell you, Joe Ingles is proving that as a passer, he is a special player. Mitchell against Bridges. First shot, first basket. He's out of the blocks fast. And I need to see some more assertiveness out of these defenders. Kyle laid the pass to Gobert. And a little under two and a half minutes gone by here in the second quarter. Conley finds Ingles. And we're going to have a jump ball. It's tied up there. You too. That's a jump ball. And Phoenix has possession. Back to Conley. Outside, Bogdanovich. Mitchell outside. Shot clock at six. With a floater. Here's Gobert. His second shot goes in. Off to a good start, two for two. Gobert has a thin frame, but make no mistake, he is physical and he relishes contact. Carter kicks to Kaminsky. And there's the whistle. Illegal screen. And now a moment to check out the leaders in the All-Star voting. Paladin underway. And this is really a fun time a year. You're starting to see which players are going to be in the running to make the All-Star team. You look at Gobert. He's among the top ten in the voting in the Western Conference. The fans rewarding him for a tremendous season so far. And I'm sure he's grateful for that. But, Kevin, I know what he really wants is a spot in that starting lineup. And keep tuning in for updated results. You can visit NBA.com for more. Seems to me that Rudy Gobert could be a Defensive Player of the Year candidate every season. But on the offensive end, guys, he's really starting to grow. And Doris, Rudy Gobert has come a long way as a finisher. No doubt, Kevin. He has led the league in field goal percentage, and they have worked so hard to get his balance and strength correct. This guy is becoming more and more dangerous as a scorer. Now here is Carter. He's still scoreless so far in this one. Bogdanovich up top, defended by Carter. And then Mitchell with the dunk. Well, how about the court awareness from Bogdanovich showing off his ability to find the open man, Kev? Carter dishes to Bridges. One fifty-six left in the first half. Back to Carter. Here's the three. Phoenix, no good that time either. Yeah, and you could tell he thought that triple was going to fall. Well, Rudy Gobert stands seven foot one, and he's an unselfish guy. It puts the pass on the money. Carter outside. Mitchell against Bridges, and the whistle blows. It's going to be on Michael Conley. That is his first foul of the game. We've got 123 left in the first half of the game. Here's Johnson, and that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. And checking out some numbers for Gobert. Great showing for him last season. He was around 16 points per last year. 13 rebounds and almost two and a half blocks. And he does the heavy lifting on the glass, throwing himself into the rebounding battle with just complete effort. Well, you get the feeling he believes every rebound should be his, and most of them are. This guy is putting up tremendous numbers. Now, here's Mitchell. He's coming off a 10-point game again. Gobert, the pass to Mitchell. Got a hand on it. And the rebound battle split evenly thus far. Here's Bridges. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. And not a season, Doris, that pops off the stanch, but a strong rookie campaign for Mikel Bridges. You simply can't ignore the defense he brings for this team. 
very refined for his experience level. Teams would love to see him grow into a third option on the offensive end with this roster. Let's see if that happens. Here's what Utah's going with right now. George Niang, he's checked in for Bogdanovich. Clarkson comes in for Joe Ingles. And it's Moutier in for Mike Conley. Got to recognize the situation, trying to get a two-for-one. Well, this is where the play call is crucial, right? If you're in a two-for-one, you've got to get the first shot quickly. Two shots, foul. Elbow, two. Phoenix shooting their fifth and sixth free throws of the game. Yeah, a year ago, though, Kevin, 78% conversion rate from the free throw line. So that's a nice all-around effort. The first free throw is good. And didn't have a single free throw in that first quarter, but he started to play with a little bit more of an edge to his game here in the second. Bradley's checked in for Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, a nice job of drawing the contact and creating opportunities at the line. Fires the three. Phoenix grabs the miss. Boy, a really tough quarter for this guy. Just struggling to make shots right now. Carter dishes to Kaminsky. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. Phoenix shooting their seventh and eighth attempts at the foul line tonight. And he makes the first. Kaminsky at the line for two. And that's good as he hits both of his shots. And here's Clarkson. He brings it up for Utah. Nine-point game. To end the run. That one falls. Well, just gets into the thick of the defense and makes a terrific play. Go ahead, Jordan Clarkson. And the first half is now in the books. Phoenix leads by seven. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Kevin, thanks. Here with head coach Quinn Snyder. Coach, what adjustments are you going to do in the second half? You just got to keep playing, keep taking the shots. And that's not the issue as much as us uh, not executing on offense. And when we don't score, sometimes our defense lags as well. Everybody wants to see the ball go in the basket first, right? Thanks, coach. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks for the great interview, David. And we'll be back for the third quarter of basketball following halftime. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey again, everybody. I'm Ernie Johnson. Shaq is here. Kenny's here. You're watching the NBA Halftime Show on 2K Sports. Checking out Phoenix. And big fella, let's get your thoughts on the home team. Yeah, you see DeAndre Ayton coming to his own. Right? Still very young, even though he doesn't look it. But all the talent is there, especially on the offensive end. How about you, Kenny? What did you think about the visiting team? I look at the lack of free throw attempts as a key indicator. Because the funny thing about getting to the charity strike, you have to earn it. You have to put your body in harm's way and be physically willing to take the hit. Right now, one team's playing aggressively and the other team isn't. That's the big difference in the score. And that'll do it for our halftime report. Stay tuned for the second half. About to get underway. And for those of you just tuning in, thanks for being with us. The second half of this game still to play. DeAndre Ayton has been sensational. He's been nothing short of a wall at the rim so far in this one, single-handedly providing great rim protection. If he is in the area, he's going to challenge your shot. He's going to block it, alter it. He's going to have an impact. Well, we've got a moment. Let's set the floor. Brought to you by Gatorade All Field Up for the second half. And Phoenix, look at who they've got on the floor. We've got Kelly Oubre. Andre Ayton out there with Sharks. Then there's Devin Booker, and it's Rubio in at the point. Utah trails by seven. Here's Conley. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. Ricky Rubio picks one up. And already over a decade in the league for Mike Conley. He, he never got past the numbers game to make the all-star team in the crowded Western Conference, but make no mistake about it, Conley is star caliber. Rubio finds Oubre. Charge with it. 
Booker outside. Charge trying to break free. Ayton, the pass to Booker. Over Mitchell. Phoenix, no good that time either. Not sure what, what the D was doing there. Clearly a breakdown. You can ill afford to give a guy like him that good a look. And Greg, you talk to Conley, he'll admit he's been frustrated trying to break through and get that recognition. Still, the, the way he plays the game, not focused on his individual numbers, unselfish, and, and focused on what the team needs to win. Here's Mitchell. Devin Booker picking up that last basket. No dice from nine feet out. And they start the second half with three straight misses. To the paint, charge. Good, and a nice assist from Booker. Booker's got his fifth assist in this one. Well, because of his size and length, Dario Saric so comfortable on the interior. Now here is Conley. Eight points for him. From 12 feet out. Second shot opportunity. And Ricky Rubio gets the whistle that time. That'll be his second foul of the game. Davis has checked in for Utah. And we're just about two minutes into the second half now. And that's a foul called on Kelly Oubre. That's his first foul. Doris, you and I love history. And we were talking the other day, you and I, about Bill Russell and his 11 championship rings. Do you think anyone's ever going to break that record? I think it'll be close to impossible, Kevin. And the reason is, number one, uh, there were so many fewer teams back then for Bill Russell, in no way diminishing the greatness of one of the game changers, both between the lines and outside the lines. Bill Russell will always be an historic figure. Uh, but it's very tough to compare eras. There's now 30 teams, nutrition, conditioning, coaching. Uh, there's just so much more information in the current era. Now Mitchell following the miss by Michael Conley from deep. I'll tell you, it feels all night like this guy's been forcing shots, rushing shots. He's really struggling on the offensive end. No good from Booker. And it's out of bounds. Utah able to retain possession here. And here we have a rundown of the players you don't want on you when you're putting up a shot. The leaders in blocks over the last month. Rudy Gobert, number one. And, of course, DeAndre Ayton. I mean, those two have been playing some special low post defense. And a lot of the shots I've seen them sliding away aren't easy to get to. And out of bounds as Utah gains possession. And taking a look here at the numbers for Mike Conley. Last season, he played outstanding. He was around 21 points per game, six assists and three rebounds. All around brilliance for him lately. And guys, he's really taken his play to another level. Don't you get the sense, Greg, that the confidence is building game by game, and he's starting to put up the numbers that back it up. And not a night he's going to want to remember, just not really able to score the basketball. And Sharich kicks to Rubio. Here's Booker. And Davis pulls it down. I'll tell you, it has not been this guy's best night, but the teammates have been there to pick up the slack. Love it. Bogdanovich looking around. And there's the pass to Davis. That falls. Nice feed that time from Bogdanovich. Phoenix leading by eight. The drive by Rubio. Ayton inside. Go bear on him. And it's Ayton missing. And so Conley will bring the ball up for Utah. Just four points. That's all they've given up here in the second half. Off his foot. And it's being called a kickball. And Phoenix making a change here. Carter's checked in. So Utah going with an almost entirely new group here. Bradley's checked in for Gobert. George Niang comes in for Bogdanovich. Jordan Clarkson, he's checked in for Donovan Mitchell. And it's Moutier in for Mike Conley. Here's Niang. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. And that one good from Clarkson. Well, the one thing about Clarkson, a little bit inconsistent from deep, so that's a welcome sight for his team. And it seems like Jordan Clarkson may have found his niche, Greg, as instant offense coming off the bench. A perfect fit for a scoring-minded combo guard. Clarkson able to create his own shot and comfortable pulling from all three levels. And on our sideline, our reporter, David Aldridge. 
Well, Kevin, one of the things that teams are more aware of in the age of analytics is the importance of sleep. And those teams are making adjustments. Morning shoot-arounds have been moved in some cases to the afternoon or eliminated altogether. There are many fewer teams that are taking red-eye flights across country. Some teams even give players orange-tinted glasses to encourage them to sleep. There's a lot of work to be done in this field, but the direction is clear. Continuing to evolve. All right, David, thank you. Here's Niang. Got a piece of it. Booker against Moutier. Booker the pass to Ayton. Trying his work from deep. The rebound by Niang. Utah trails by nine. Clarkson on the wing. Let's it go from deep. Offensive rebound. Good D by Booker. Well, Phoenix shooting just 33% in the second half so far. They need to look at more high-quality shots. I tell you, like lightning, Kelly Oubre flashes through on the drive. No one quick enough to stop him. And stolen by Booker. And Phoenix pushing it up now. Four seconds separating the shot and game clocks. And Aiton throws it down. Attacking in transition the most consistent way to generate easy looks. The very definition of quality transition offense. If it can end at the cup, it's exactly where you want it. And here's Clarkson. He's got seven to stop the run. And that one hits back iron. To the inside, Aiton. And Aiton throws it down. Boy, you have to be impressed with the offensive production. They have got it firing on all cylinders. And at this point, it is their game to lose. They've done such a good job building the lead. And so it's Phoenix riding a 15-point lead at the end of the quarter. They've excelled in the open court. Their transition game has allowed them to build this healthy lead. And we'll be right back after this. And a moment now as we take a look at our State Farm assists of the game. And he sliced the D wide open with this feed. They had no chance to prevent that basket. Well, that's what a great pass will do, right? You love the unselfish play. And as we head into the fourth, we'll see if there's a comeback in the works or if it's more of the same from the first three quarters. And Utah, looking at who they've got to start the fourth quarter. Jordan Clarkson is out there with Emmanuel Moutier. Then there's Bradley. Then it's Joe Ingles. And it's Niang in at the power forward. Here's Hayton. And Sharich kicks to Bridges. And another shot. Nice ball movement by Phoenix. Six to shoot. Phoenix needs to get off a shot. And there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get the shot off in time. Phoenix making some changes. Aaron Baines, he's checked in for Aiton. And it's Kaminsky in for Dario Sharch. Utah trails by 15. Pass to Bradley. He kicks to Clarkson. Ingles with the ball. Floats one up, and he lays it up and in. Ingles has got the fourth quarter going with the first basket of the period here for Utah. Moutier against Carter. Johnson outside. Takes a three. Utah with the rebound. Next step for them, the Knicks, a road game in New York. That puts them squarely in the middle of this five-game road trip. And it's out of bounds. Utah able to retain possession here. And Phoenix making a change here. Okobo's checked in. So Utah going with an almost entirely new group here. Rudy Gobert, he's checked in for Brantley. Bogdanovich comes in for George Niang. Mitchell, he's checked in for Clarkson. And Mike Conley is subbed in for Emmanuel Moutier. How impressive is the catch-and-shoot game of Donovan Mitchell? I'll tell you, you better be there on the catch or he's going to make you look silly. Akobo, the pass to Bridges. Inside. And 
And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. Michael Conley picks one up. Doris, if you were going to build a team around one player, who would that player be? Well, I think because of his age and continued growth opportunity, I would probably say Giannis Antetokounmpo. He's playing at an MVP level. He's still got another decade where he's probably in the peak range of his playing capabilities. And the reality is Giannis still has so much growing to do. He's a, he's a force at the rim. He continues to build that three-point game. And Kev, once he gets that in-between game, he will be unguardable. Mm -hmm. Can't argue with that at all. Phoenix leading by 13. Here's a Kobo. Johnson outside. In the corner, it's Bridges. Pass to Okobo. Five to shoot. Here's Johnson. Utah with the rebound. Gobert's got double-digit rebounds now in the game. And it's Mitchell with the jam. Boy, how about the blinding speed in transition? Donovan Mitchell, ferocious attacking in the open floor. Akobo, the pass to Baines. Passes it to Bridges. Kaminsky inside. He's covered by Bogdanovich. And the shot goes in. Enzo Conley will bring the ball up for Utah. Here in the fourth, they've allowed just four points. And there's the whistle. That goes on Frank Kaminsky. That is his first foul of the game. Devin Booker, he's checked in for Bridges. And Gobert kicks to Ingles. Back to Gobert. Mitchell looking it over. Clock at four. I got yours. I got yours. Three pointer. And it's Phoenix with the rebound. Kaminsky's got rebound number five here tonight. And they've only got a slight edge on the boards, but it just feels a lot bigger. Here's Bogdanovich. Finished off the break. Bogdanovich has got his first bucket in this one. I don't think there's much more you can do. Bogdanovich is too skilled and too strong on these finishes with contact. Here's a Kobo, covered by Conley. Johnson against Ingles. And the pass to a Kobo. On the wing, Booker for the three. Rudy Gobert with the rebound. Gobert's got the glass covered here tonight. 11 boards for him. Knocks down the three ball. Boy, Mitchell's confidence is off the charts right now. Off the dribble jumper. Yes, sir. Johnson outside. Now here's Booker. From deep, Rudy Gobert with the rebound. Gobert's got rebound number 12 here already in the game. Mitchell rejected by Booker. Phoenix timeout, calls timeout. timeout. They're ahead by eight. 111 left in the fourth quarter. of our Jordan player of the game, DeAndre Ayton. And he's up over 50% from the field here tonight. And that speaks to how solid his shot selection has been. Nothing forced and really no bad decisions. Just good, smart, offensive basketball. And at last, he gets a little redemption. You know, it's been several games since he's been at his best. He's really been having a tough time. Now let's go to the sideline and catch up with our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. Hey guys, I had a chance to listen to what Monty Williams discussed with his players. He likes where things are headed, but he cautioned them to play smart the rest of the way. He said carelessness with the ball, with assignments, with rotations, any of that can undo what we've worked to accomplish so far. Kevin, they are so close. Thanks, David. Floats one. 
and it's Phoenix with the rebound. And so they foul intentionally. And Phoenix has possession. Six-point lead. Booker outside. Rubio outside. A three ball. Devin Booker, and that's good. Well, this is where Booker can really hurt you. Very capable and confident three-point shooter. Go ahead, Devin. Mitchell dishes to Ingles. Tried to come right back with the three of his own, but it's no good. Booker left side. Fires from the corner. Again, the miss by Booker. Now Conley. So it's Phoenix picking up the win. Even early on in this one, it seemed like they were happy to be playing at home tonight. And it makes a big difference. And once they started to really play in rhythm, you never felt like they had any doubts as to whether or not they were going to win. Well, folks, that's going to do it for now. For Greg Anthony, Doris Burke, and David Oldham, this is Kevin Harlan along with our terrific 2K Sports crew thanking you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Have a great evening.